So unfortunately for the last intro on this build, I'm bundled up again. Um, I thought warmer weather was here to stay, but obviously that didn't happen. But it, it seems like most of the country is experiencing one little last cold snap. So hopefully um, by next week this will be, be done, uh, done, gone and done with. But um, this is the final conclusion to the liquor cabinet build. So this is part three. Um, it should be all the little finishing touches. I didn't film a ton of painting just because that's pretty straightforward, but you could obviously see this is pretty much done. Um, I do have some touch-ups to do. I always end up nicking things a little bit because I disassemble them almost completely in order to paint them. And then reassembly, they get, they get nicked up a little bit. I like to wait a couple days before I deliver this sort of stuff to the customer's house. It cuts down on how many touch-ups I have to do after that as well. But like I said, this is this is pretty much done. On camera, it probably looks finished. In real life, there's, there's little touch-ups to be done. So there were eight doors to make on that, and when I milled up that lumber, I knew I was doing this project. So you could see I already had all of my rails and styles rough cut out with um, the groove through the middle, so I'm not gonna film that. At that point, I was able to start adding the little tenon on the end of my pieces in order to make my doors. So this was probably one of the fastest uh, set of doors I've ever made just because that material was already ready to go. But for these, I do use poplar from places like Lowe's. It is more expensive because it comes pre-finished, but it just saves me time and they turn out pretty well. It's not perfectly finished. Um, you could probably probably get a little bit fine-tuned results if you send this stuff through a jointer and a planer first, but I've never had problem with making doors with this sort of stuff. So once I had um, all of my pieces set up, you could see I'm making the tongue that will go into the doors. You could clean up that joint and um, sneak up on it. I always do a test test piece for all of these before I start cutting my finals. And then these doors are almost perfectly square, so after I cut the insert, I had to f make sure I was getting it in, in the, the right side, and then I could dry fit my doors as well. The inside panel is quarter inch finished uh, cabinet grade birch, birch veneer ply. So only two doors, and like I said, most of the material was already already ready for me to start building these, so these went together pretty quickly. And then to glue these together, I'm only adding glue to to the tenons. The plywood is, is dimensionally stable. It won't really move around on you, but the outer frame of the poplar will, so I never glue in, in the panel pieces. And then I can just pop these back together. I always uh, check for square and clamp them up. So I'll add clamps to the side, it will pull the joints together, make sure they're square, and I'll sink a brad in each corner in the back side. And then that's how I let those dry. So then at this point, I'm making the wine rack. I found dimensions online for this to, to, get, it, to get it accurate, but I had some scrap uh, 2 by 6 laying around. This is just holding up wine glasses, and it's it's pretty hidden, otherwise I wouldn't have used pine on this. But um, the 2x4 is great because you already have the thickness you need. So I'm just roughing out these dimensions, just cutting it into into rough widths, as well as then cutting it into, into rough, rough depth. I believe I do show the dimensions of, of what I use to make these. Yeah, there they are. So it's three quarter inch wide by two and three quarter inch, three quarters tall by two and three quarter inch wide, and then you just add an angle on the edge and cut it out. I was going to pre-order these because I'm just really backed up with work at the moment and stuff like this you can find online. But um, after making them myself, I could easily say that the the ones I saw online are just ridiculously expensive, and I'm happy I made them in the shop with 2x6 material like you saw it was easy to rip it down to size and then you're basically just adding this first cut on either side that I'm showing and it's equidistant so you can make the first cut and then flip it and then you're making an angle cut and I made it on a long piece of lumber so I could then just cut these all down to size and I had enough pieces I needed so these were pretty easy to make uh, having found those measurements it just saves the time of trying to figure out the angle, the spacing, and all of that um, on your own. 
I could take out those pieces. I forget exactly what that angle was. I just eyed it up based on based on putting this piece next to the blade, and then I just I tilted it until it, it until it lined up with my mark. There's a little cleanup to do because this is dimensional grade degrade the uh, dimensional grade lumber but after that they worked out really nicely as you could see I cut one big piece and I could just have a stop on my radial arm saw and cut these all down to size so the spacing I did for this I did on the shelf so it was a little easier to do you could see the spacing worked out almost perfectly that wasn't really planned this was kind of the width of the cabinet and it worked out nicely I used a wine glass just to make sure my spacing was accurate and then that was what I was left on the side. I took one one last full piece and ripped it down into two pieces and that is how I got my spacing and then I could just transfer these up to the top of the cabinet. For the time being, just to get the alignment in place, I'm uh, using some brads to hold these in place but I'll countersink some screws later and permanently attach these. You can see the wine glasses work. And then for the shelves, I'm using undermount drawer slides. These are my drawer slides of choice nowadays. I just find that they open nicer. I like not seeing the hardware, and I also find there's a, um, more forgiveness in the final product. So that's just fitting the drawer box into the cabinet. So then on this side, I show you the two panels I already have fit. These are inset panels, so if your drawer boxes in your cabinet opening are not square you're gonna to have to tweak them now on this everything was square except for that partition piece of plywood it bowed in the center on both sides so what I'm doing now is I just rough cut a panel to fit in there and I'm using a penny as a spacer to get it where I want and then I'm making marks where I want to remove material so since that plywood bows up in the center I'm removing a little bit of material. Now if your panels are completely out of square, you'll really notice these incremental changes I'm making, but mine are ever so slight and the rest of the cabinet is square. So you can see I just removed a little bit of that material until that reveal is even, and then I could start veneering the edges of the, the false fronts on my cabinets. And like I said, I do, I like the, those are the Blum undermount draw slides. I like them because there's a little bit of a learning curve making them, but once you make them, I just find that they're easier, much easier to us install than the, the side mounts. And I like that you don't see the hardware. So then I drew a hole through the front for the hardware. I could put that screw in and I could really um, rack this down so that that front barely moves. And then I just shimmy into place and I add some screws from the backside, which I don't believe I film, but that's how I get that panel set. You can see I'm just making adjustments to the undermount of the slide. And then seeing it from there, you could barely tell that that top part isn't square. Doing the exact same thing to the doors and I had the exact same problem. That top uh, piece of plywood was not perfectly square, so I had to just take little pieces off. Using the power planer is great, it makes quick work of it, you just have to be really careful because you can remove too much material at one time. And then I made the doors oversized, you can see now that that top is square, I could just bring this to the table saw and rip off a little piece of that edge and it fit in there perfectly. These are inset hinges I'm using for the doors because they are inset doors. Um, so you could hand drill this stuff or do it on the table saw, at uh, the table saw, the drill press. I only had four to do, so I just did it by hand. It's very easy to attach these cup hinges. They're pretty universal. I've never run into ones that are different. I believe this is Blum hardware as well. The only problem with using this sort of hardware is they're going to give you measurements in millimeters, and they usually don't ship the instructions with the Amazon product. Um, I've done enough of them that I usually just do this without needing instructions but sometimes they are a little bit different but you can easily go online and find them just to find out how much you have to set back those hinges so then this is the cabinet with primer I put a coat of primer on which I did not film at all and um, this is a shellac based primer from Zinzer I put two coats on there because it's a very liquidy primer I like it a lot because it dries in 15 minutes because it's shellac based but it goes on pretty watery so I usually put two coats 
So I've had this piece of cherry plywood attached to the front side of my door for a couple years. I needed it when I was making a cherry bed and I had to buy two sheets of ply, but I only needed a partial part of the other one. It worked out perfectly that the customer wanted the cherry top on this and I happened to have this plywood on hand. Um, it was a little bit cheaper for them versus buying hardwood lumber. And I like the fact that it's going to be dimensionally stable and I'm attaching it to a plywood base so I really don't have to worry too much about wood movement at all on this piece. So I'm just rough cutting it down to size and then rough cutting it down to width. This was a pretty big top. You can see it's over 24 inches wide and about 5 foot, foot long. So I put a little bit of blue tape on this before I cut it on my radial arm saw because this, this veneered ply, the veneer is so thin, the radial arm saw will tear it up. And um, I used some blue tape this time, or I should say I remembered to use it because I knew that was a good trick. And it really kept that edge clean, so that was, that was nice. I didn't have to worry about fixing any of that. And then I got some cherry veneer and I'm just veneering the edges. For the finish on the top, I'm using water locks just because it's, it's pretty durable finish and I'm assuming there's going to be cocktails and whatnot made on the top. So I had a little bit left in the can I had, and then I had to order a new one. This, the shelf life of water locks is not very long, so if you're gonna start using it, I would not recommend buying extra if you didn't have plans to use it for the near future. So then, like I said, I, I thought I filmed some of the painting. Apparently I filmed none of it, so you could see the cabinet is already um, the grayish color that the customer picked out. It was a Sherwin-Williams finish, the one with the, uh, the urethane in it, and then I could just reassemble this and send them a picture. I was thinking of spraying this piece, but I have a lot going on in my shop right now, which means spraying with all the dust is just a catastrophe, so I did roll this piece, so it did take quite a while to paint it. But um, you can see it will slide back together pretty nicely. There's about two coats of paint on this, I don't do, I do too, and then um, I always know there's going to be touch-ups at the customer's house. But you can see I just can reassemble all of this. Painting pieces like this is a pain in my shop because taking it all apart, it's the hardest part's finding just places to put everything while they're drying, which is why I like that shellac base primer. Everything dries so quickly, I could paint it quickly and then move it out of the way. Now I'm going to be installing this maybe this week upcoming week and i will tr try and get some finished photos and update the thumbnails for this in the space especially to get better photos of the top